Number five, Landry for Canada, Pete. She'll win this game on her own. She was so impressive yesterday. Now, she makes breaks from anywhere on the field. She's got great hands, Landry, and, you know, she, she is a class above all these players, much like Green uh, for the Aussie Pearls. She kind of carries this team, Canada team. Not saying that the other girls don't put in, but she is an absolute world beater. Of course, big games yesterday from Maple Leafs number four in Kelly Russell and also Kayla Mack. So they have that pinpoint decision making skills to get the ball out to the edge at every opportunity. And here they go, straight through over the halfway line. They've got 40 left to run. I don't know if they're going to capture her. Away that goes Russell. She'll pin the ears back and Russell, she gets the first try for the Maple Leafs. And that happened in the first 40 seconds of play. Yes, and that was just too big, too strong. She picked the ball up, just went straight through. And the Japanese girls were trying to chase her down, but... Couldn't get to her. They tried to knock her over, but, you know, she's very strong on her feet, isn't she? And we, sh we saw that yesterday. She's very hard to put down. And she goes all the way, scores the first try of the game. And I tell you what, this could be a big score, Pete. You're not wrong. Here's the kick now coming up from uh, Magali Harvey. She's 15 metres in from touch. About 15 off the right-hand side of the post. Not a bad strike, but just fades the right-hand side of the upright. So no change here on the Bar TV scoreboard. We've had one minute of play. It's the Maple Leaves over the Rue Girls 7 by five points to nil. And it's a hot central coast, but it's even hotter with the excitement that these girls are producing. The Maple Leafs, they are in white hot form. No question about that. And, of course, the Canadians, they are competing here at the Central Coast Sevens for the first time. And no doubt they're seeking to go straight to the top later today. Yes, and as you mentioned, they are ranked third in the world, this Canadian side. The Rue Girls Sevens, though, they're the premier team outside the national side in Japan. So they're no slouches themselves. But I tell you what, this Canadian side has slips through the gap there, the number six in Mandy Marchak. And she is under the post for a try. And that's the second try in two minutes, Pete. Yeah, not great signs here for the Japanese, that is for sure. She's getting up now after scoring that try. She might have just taken a knock. In fact, she did take a knock as she planted that ball down underneath the post. But she's got back up, and that's the thing. You know, not many players are down and out, are they? They just get back up, and they've just got that fierce competitiveness in them, which just keeps on going all day. Here's the kick, a little stab cunt. Over the post it goes... So there you go, a little stab punt, and it's gone over. And now it's 10 points to nil here on the Bar TV scoreboard. Yes, Pete, and, and that's what you'll find. A lot of punting goes on with the drop kicks off the toe. They, they do tend to kick it with the toe, the girls, and it's, it's quite impressive. They can get it from the sideline. They can get it from in front. As okay. we go now for the restart, Canada, through Landry, is going to take another punt at it. That's a better toe punt. It goes down to the 10, as you'd expect here in the sevens. And good defence over the top as well. So let's see what the opposition has here. Will there be an intercept? Oh, even better. We see a tackle that was effective, but that's created a gap up the middle of the field. They're over the halfway line. Now we're at the Olympics. It's going to be a chase. Fending off one, two, offloading back to the eight. She straightens up. Look at her yellow boots go. She gets under one tackle and she's dropped down about 30 metres out from the line. It comes back there now up the middle of the field and they're getting in each other's way. They're just creating a little bit of havoc here in the Central Coast Sevens as they advance the ball inside the Maple Territory by 10 metres, stepping, weaving, looking for the offload, but she won't get the offload. She gets one banner. She's got a penalty on the 10. Yes, Yoko Fuma yesterday was one of the better players out there, the number 12, and she's lightning quick as we saw then, but Landry equal to the task as she, she made the break there and, and covered off. As they come now, Japan still on the tack. Penalty coming to the Leafs. Yes, not releasing the ball there, the Japanese side. That's a big let off for, for Canada as the Rue 7 girls look very, very promising there in attack. Okay. A little bit of a break here as Landry's down, but she's okay. She'll go again. Well, that was the first time we've seen the... Very impressive through the hands. Japanese, the Rue, yeah, inside the, the half. Sevens when, when they put, put a few passes together, aren't they? That's why they're the premier club team in Japan, I, I guess. Japan, obviously, a, a big, a growing bed of uh, rugby over there. You know, it's, it's getting quite large, obviously, with the Premier Men's 
uh, side and, and Rugby Sevens as well is, is creating quite a bit of interest over there too. As we come now for what what is the first line out uh, for this Sevens match here? Well, it's taking Canada and USA by storm, isn't it, Rugby? And, of course, both competing nations are here at the sevens as the Leafs now approach the halfway line. She's got support. She goes through the gap. She's over the 10, inside the 22. She's got 10 to go. She's going to go all the way. Somebody stop her. Yes. Plants it down and scores. As we mentioned before, Landry is the danger woman here for the Canadian side. And, and she just used her pure speed there, just busted through the hole. And it was never a shadow of the doubt, Pete as she came over and put the ball about 10 metres in from touch. Well, that makes it 17 points to nil here on the Bar TV scoreboard. And that is the third try of the afternoon for the Maple Leafs. And the kick will come from about five metres in from touch here on the western side of Maury Breenoval. If you just tune to the telecast, another stinking hot day here. Up around 28, 29 degrees they're expecting. Here's the toe punt, and it goes to the left-hand side this time. So no change on the Bar TV scoreboard. We've still got the Maples in front by 17 points to nil. Yes, and it's coming up to half time, Peter, and it's, it's going to be a pretty long half with this Rue Girls Sevens, I think, the next half. The sun out there is absolutely boiling. Yesterday we had the breeze, but the breeze just hasn't come in yet, the doctor. The Wyong Doctor. Yes, the Wyong Doctor has not entered Wyong yet. It's still at Avoca, mate. Still coming down the coast. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, you'll be happy to know that this has gone more than 10 metres. That was one of your pet hates yesterday, but so far, so good here on finals day. I tell you what, it did my head in yesterday, didn't it? But there's been one, there's been one indiscretion so far, but one out of two isn't bad when it was about four out of three in two games. Anyways, we come now for the scrum. Looking over at one of the major sponsors' tent there, 2GO. 2GO, Fitness First. The tournament couldn't have been successful without our major sponsors on board. And throughout the nine-hour coverage today, we'll indeed get through the entire sponsor list as they spin it out wide here. The siren's going to go in the background. The 12 is with it, but they just stoppage the play here, just outside the Japanese 22. Yeah, she's called that pass four, which I think it was. It was thrown gridiron style, went in about two metres forward. That one floated forward. But I'll tell you what, Yakushima, the number 12, she looks very, very dangerous when she does get the ball. But other than that, this Canadian side, again, impressing. They're not playing as structured as the Australian Pearls team. They play a bit more ad-lib footy. But I'll tell you what, it's going to be, I think, those guys, the Pearls and the Fijiana side, if they can get through the day. It's going to be an interesting afternoon anyway, Pete. It will be a fantastic afternoon. And, of course, coming up after this match, we'll have Wellington up against Warringah. And then at 10-10, Davita from Fiji. They'll be playing the Tiger rugby squad from the USA. Then we move into the semi-finals. We'll have the boot division. We'll have the ball division. And for everybody that uh, looking forward to the latter part of the day, the plate division will get underway around 10 past 1 this afternoon. Then it will be the cup division, the boot finals, the ball finals, the plate final, and we'll have the cup finals about 6.15 later tonight. So well, there's more divisions than algebra, isn't there, in this competition? <laughs> that is for sure. But everyone gets a game, and that's what we love about Sevens. It's the community feel. It's a carnival atmosphere here at Wong. I'm having an absolute ball here on the Central Coast. If you want to get in touch with us, it's hashtag Bar TV Sports, hashtag CC7S to get interactive with the commentary team and get interactive, of course, with the Central Coast Sevens. Big I shout out to Craig who puts on the tournament. It's a wonderful effort and, and this day shows his commitment to the sport of Sevens and the sport of rugby itself. And he was saying yesterday he just takes a week off and then he's back producing next year's tournament and of course registrations are already command they're already open so if you want to get a part of this tournament uh the email uh, process to register is now available to everyone pretty much across the globe so we've got 28 games to come here on bar tv throughout the course of the next eight and a half hours it's a mammoth coverage as we see now the japanese girls trying to go wide trying to put something together because they are down by a fair few 17 points to nil on the bar tv scoreboard and they're dragged down from behind just inside their 22 they're not coming outside are they they're 22 they're being trapped down inside that area they'll need to go wide and chance their luck but so far 
the uh, Maple Leafs, they're just doing their job and preventing them getting outside their 22. Yes, and they're going backwards to go forwards. And here they come now, attacking off their own line. They've lost 40 metres here off the kickoff, but still attacking. And that's how sevens is, isn't it, Peter? It's just attack, 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 as they've got clear space in front of them on the outside. She, oh, good palm to the face there from the number 12, the danger girl, Yokoshima. Oh, yeah, there's a penalty going to... The girls, and they take the quick tap, and they put the foot down. They cross the halfway line. They're coming after her, and they drag her down from behind as she just went past the 10-metre line. They're inside the Maple Leafs' end of the field. Now they're going back inside their own half, and they looked to straighten the play up, and now they put the foot down. The race is on. She's got 22 to go. Oh, what a try-saving tackle. She brings her down 20 metres out from the line. Ball's out the back. Gareth, I thought she was home and hose. Yes, yeah, so well, that was a great bit of defence there and great desperation. Pulled down. I would have liked to see the Japanese side score. They've been very gallant here. And, and the, the clean out was one to watch as well. It was a kamikaze style clean out there as she came through. But Canada now with the ball. And that's a penalty there for holding on uh, to the ball. So that'll be a good out attacking opportunity here for this Japanese Rue Sevens girls side. Down by 17 points to nil. Penalty from right in front of the post. Just inside the 22. Just taking her time, surveying her options. Which way will she come? She comes to the western side, which is the commentary side. And she's dropped down about uh, 20 metres away from the Maple Leafs line. Numbers this way. Just a matter of throwing the dummy and putting your foot down. Seeing the gap, probing the gap, probing the hole and planting the white ball over the line. And that is what she's done. Try time. What a great little jink. A little dance and straight through. And it's easy as you say. A higher gazamas. As she's over the line. Give her a saki. She'll have one. That is for sure. Maybe not quite now, but she might have plenty after the match. Here's the kick from five to the right of the post. Can they convert? We'll find out right now on the Bar TV pitches. Right boot hits it. Looks okay. It's even better. She now turns five into seven. So on the Bar TV scoreboard, Gareth Wozzick, it's still the Maple Leafs leading the Rue girls by 17 points to seven. 17-7. Seven. How long have we got to go in this half, Peter? Because I tell you what, the Rue girls have really opened up and made a real match of this in this second half. Three and a half minutes. Yeah, so it's anyone's game still. As we said before, anything can change, just like the wind did yesterday. It was swirling around, and that's a good analogy for Sevens Rugby, isn't it? Is it what? And get in contact with us here at Bar TV. Hashtag Bar TV Sports or hashtag CC Sevens, and we'll endeavour to get your messages out to the world as we go live into every nation here this afternoon, thanks to the World Wide Web and a fantastic promotion for rugby, not just here on the Central Coast, but across all the nations that are competing and uh, the Maple Leafs from Canada. Well, great yeah. defence there by the number 12. I'll tell you what, it if was. she's not called up into the Japanese national squad, be something I wrong. don't know what they're thinking in <laughs> Japan. <laughs> well, it could be a big month. For Japan, of course, in the racing department, we've got the Melbourne Cup and big hopes on one of the Japanese horses there. But so far, it is Canada leading the charge here against the Japanese. A penalty goes to the Maple Leafs here. Ten short of the halfway line. They take the tap and spin it out towards the grandstand side. Of course, to our local viewers, that's the Joe Bishop stand of the field. Look at them go down the sideline inside the 22. Nobody's going to catch them. And they've gone all the way to score the try. And it looks like the number 11 yes, has Harvey. scored Harvey. Harvey scores the try and just too big, too quick, too fast. And she just scoots around them. It makes them look really pedestrian, but that's unlucky for the Japanese side. They've been, they've been into it up to now, but I think that's the nail in the coffin for them. 22-7. Let's check the kick from right in front. And looking to convert her own try. Just taking her time. Hot conditions, steamy conditions. As we mentioned, 26 degrees down there on the ground. Here's the toe punt. Looks good. She's got it. Well, there we go. 24 to 7 with only about one and a half minutes remaining here on the official Bar TV scoreboard. Yes, good drop kick there to score. Uh, very impressive, this Canadian side. Uh, <laughs> Harvey just 
smoked them for speed then, didn't she? I still I can't them. see you from yesterday with all that smoke from yesterday yeah. and it's about to just, stay here. We only just got it cleared away and now it's oh. just blown back in from Harvey. I think it was her yesterday that, that yeah. just came around and, and scored from her own 22. But I tell you what, she kicks off again and that's a pinpoint kick Ooh, just before the 10. I'll let that one slide, Pete. Yeah, we'll let that one slide through to the keeper. One a game. One a game. <laughs> Anything over one a game, I'm blowing up. As it doesn't make 10, the Japanese side, the Rue Girl Sevens will take the tap on halfway as they spin the ball wide immediately. Little dummy, she's met by a wall of Canadian Maple Leaf defence. Yeah, just on 48 seconds remaining in the match. Nice hands here, but it's gone straight to the Maple Leafs. Can she offload? It was stolen out of her grasp there from... The Japanese, now they look like they're going to go back inside their 22. The defence comes through and they bang them down right on the line. Now we see which way will they go. Not long on the clock to go here. We've only got 18 seconds remaining. Yes, this Japanese side giving a lot of, uh, giving a lot away in, in sort of height and weight, aren't they? But I'll tell you what, they're very, they're very nippy up the middle. They're very, very fast when, when the holes open up. So they could score another try. There's still points in this game, Pete. Here's the siren. This will be the last play of the game, of course. The Canadian side will look to probably go down the blind, I'd imagine. Yes. The number nine here. Farella takes the line on. Look at her go. She's got on the outside of the four and pins the ears back again and scores another try. And that'll do it for this third match. Yes, it's the second match. Second match. The little show and go down the blind side. It was always on. A big, big blind, and I tell you what, they weren't blind to it. They they scored the try, capitalised, and and that's blown the score out now to 29-7. And the kick from the touchline, pretty much. Well, there we go. Speaking of the third match, as I was about to say, Wellington from New Zealand. The team from across the ditch will be taking on the Australian locals pretty much in the Warringah side. That's coming up right now here exclusively across the Bar TV television network. Hashtag Bar TV Sports. Get in contact with the commentary side. And as we keep on saying, we will.